What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna go over spray on bed liner. Now there are many different companies out there, but I like to use Raptor spray on bed liner. Now this is not a sponsored video, but by all means, I like to convey what I like to use because I've used many different products out there. And then in my opinion, I feel this is probably the best on the shelf. So with that said today, we're gonna go over the actual prepping and then uh, to get ready for you know any grinding, any kind of grease removal, et cetera. And then we're gonna move right into the actual masking and taping of the car itself. That way we don't have any overspray issues. And then after that, we're gonna get into the actual application of the spray on bed liner, how to actually apply it, and we're gonna go from there. So with that said, hopefully this is the upload that you're looking for. We got a lot of work to do. Let's do this. Okay, so what I like to do is take saran wrap and I like to wrap the entire assembly just so I know that that is done well. The reason why I don't use masking paper is because it's mainly just bulky and it tends to get in the way. And then I also have to use another product to actually hold the masking paper there. It's called masking tape. So that's a lot of money. A roll of saran wrap is about $2, $3 max. Now, normally, typically you can go to the grocery store and you can buy their brand saran wrap and you can get it really cheap. And in all reality, that's all this is. This is just saran wrap. This is amazing for wrapping parts because it's so cheap and it goes so far. You could buy a 200 foot roll and it goes really, really far for like three bucks. So everything stays tight. You don't have to worry about any bulkiness. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. And not just that, this does not produce static. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get in here. We're going to start prepping the area. You can see that there is some corrosion issues. There are some rusting. So this is something that we're definitely going to have to take care of and do it now. This car is bagged, so it sits really low. So the car sitting down further towards the ground, it's going to collect a lot more moisture. Obviously, the fender liner has been removed here. There is no plastic liner in. So that's been removed. Same thing with the rear as well plastic liner has been taken out and as you can see I've already started to prep the area. So I went through here and I degreased all the area with lacquer thinner. I like using lacquer thinner because it's basically pretty aggressive enough to where I can actually wipe away any kind of road grime residue or rubberized undercoating that actually didn't apply or didn't stick to the metal itself. It'll wipe right off and then it evaporates very quickly. So that's why I like lacquer thinner. I typically do not like to use <clears throat> any kind of uh, prep saw or prep all or any kind of grease removal, et cetera, like that. That stuff actually leaves a residue when you're putting it on. You know, you, you got to use it and then you got to wipe it again because there's like a white film that's left over. That's the residue. So lacquer thinner <clears throat> leaves a lot less residue because it's so aggressive and it tends to cut a lot better. So that's why I use it. So on this side, um, we've actually got a brand new fender also as well. So I'm going to be pulling the fenders off. We're going to be prepping all of the back sides of the fenders so that we don't have to worry about any rust issues for the metal itself. I like to rust proof. That's actually my thing. That's, that's my bread and butter. I like to show people how to actually keep their Subarus on the road for fucking life because Subaru is not going to protect your investment. That's up to you. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, we're going to prep all the back sides of the fenders. We're also going to get on the inside of the quarter panels and all of the insides of the quarter panels are also going to be coated all the way down the dog legs inside of the rocker panels. There are already holes that are drilled out. You know, typically you can see the holes just for the body clips for the side skirts. You can see here's the holes for the side skirts. This is where all of the cavity wax will be applied. Uh, cavity wax is something that I highly recommend. Cavity wax can come in an aerosol can. It's really great. And then you can have a nice tool 
Let me find it. Okay, all right, so cavity wax application. This is your hose. This goes on the end of the aerosol can. And on the end of the tip is a 360 degree wand that will spray it basically in every single direction. So that gets shoved inside there, all the cavity wax, all the cavities will be wax coated on the inside. That way you don't have to worry about any kind of moisture getting inside there and just ruining all this fresh body work that we did. So yeah, now it's time to seal everything up. I'm gonna get everything all sealed now that the body work is done. Once it's all sealed, then I can go through and sand all this down and get it all done. But for now, let's jump into the application of bed liner. Okay, so I typically use a 36 grit. I don't use the 80 grit hook it. Hook it is a sand disc that typically will go on an ankle grinder. That way you can grind all this stuff down. I've gone through already and the black stuff that's actually on here, right here, and this whole area, you can see this is all freshly coated. That is POR15. It is P-O-R-15, which stands for pour over rust. And it is a great, great thing. Um, actually, let me turn the light on. There you go, you can get an idea. It's a little dusty in here, I've been working a lot lately. But anyways, this is paintable. This is great because Pour 15, this pour over rust, chemically stops any kind of rusting that was in here. There was some surface rust in here, so I went ahead and I grinded everything down, and then I brushed all the pour 15 in, and then I let it set up. What's great about this being paintable now is I can come in here with a scuff pad, and normally I typically, you can use a red scuff pad to scuff it up. It takes some elbow grease to do it, and you can do that without marring it up, but because we are bedlining this area, I wanna rough this up as best as possible. So I'm gonna come in here with some 180 to you know 80 grit sandpaper typically, and I'm gonna rough it up. Then I'm gonna spray my bed liner directly up and over that pour 15, giving it the extra protection that is needed. So that's basically what we're gonna do. We're gonna come through here and we are going to remove any kind of seam sealer or any kind of rust proofing that they actually put in here. That was actually the first step I've done right here. This white stuff is actually kind of like a seam sealer coating that gets sprayed on here. It is a spray seam sealer. It's basically like a rubberized undercoating because it is malleable. It never hardens. So it stays kind of soft and because of that, it can cause problems allowing moisture to get behind it and it rusts. So typically when I am removing a lot of this stuff out of here, I find rust, a lot of surface rust behind it. So that's why I get rid of it, especially the seam sealer. Uh, seam sealer like right here, this is all seam sealer. So we're gonna get rid of that and then we're gonna redo everything. And then you can see right here, like perfect example. So I removed this whole section here and then look at the pinch weld, that's rusty. You know, and that was underneath. You can even see right here. Look at all the rust underneath this. This shit don't do anything. So Subaru thinking that they were helping you. Yeah, they probably did for a few years until the water actually got to do its job and oxidize the area. So that's basically what's happening. And uh, typically, you know, these cars, they do run pretty well, but this whole area will literally rot right out. It's just a Subaru thing. We don't, we don't have quarter panels and rockers because... They don't do any rush protection for us. So that's what this upload is. This is going to teach you how to protect your investment, how to stop your car from ever rusting ever again. And if you do have some rust, I'm gonna show you how to take care of it in the process. So pour 15, highly recommend. Um, actually, I'll put that right here. That's actually pour 15. Great stuff. It's not cheap, but it works. That's why it's not cheap. Go out, get it, use it, it's great. You can apply it. Um, it can actually be cut with lacquer thinner and sprayed, but I don't recommend doing it. I would just use it straight out of the can, brush it on nice and thick, let it tack up, let it dry a little bit to where it's not quite coming off on your fingers, but it's very sticky. And then put another freaking coat on there. That's called a tack coat. Second coat, 
you're done. Two thick coats, that stuff is, mwah, it's beautiful. I love it, I highly recommend it. So now, 415's on there, that's all coated. We don't have to worry about rust anymore. That's chemically done. Now we're gonna get into the actual stripping and the prepping of all of the wheel wells. So I'm gonna do this wheel well, as well as this one. We're gonna take this fender off also, as well as the other one, so that it's a lot easier to get into these wheel wells. And then once we get all of the grinding done, which is the prepping portion, then we can actually go through and blow it all off and then we can start masking and taping everything that's needed. So we're gonna start with step one, which is prepping. And then we're gonna go into step two, which is masking and taping. And the third step, the final step will be the actual application of the Raptor spray on bed liner. Now, by all means, I am not gonna make you watch me grind all of these wheel wells. If I do, I'm probably just gonna put it in a really fast time lapse so you get a, a broad idea, uh, you know, just kind of a simple idea of what's entailed of it. Um, it's gonna take some time. Be ready for that. But understand, you only have to do this once. So as you saw, everything has been grinded down and this is basically what it's going to look like being masked off. And before you mask it all off and get it all taped off, this is basically what it's going to look like. So step one, grind everything down, get everything all roughed up enough to where the bed liner itself will stick to it and adhere properly. So on stink eyes, on the front wheel well, there's normally no problems. As you can see, there's really no corrosion up in here. But they normally do corrode right here in this area, and then they drip down to this area. So this whole cap of this front rocker panel tends to actually rust or rot out. So it has a lot of problems. As you can see, it snapped this hardware, and actually on the same place on the other side, it actually broke also as well because of the dripping water that comes down. So what I've done is prep this whole area and that's what we're gonna do. They actually do a really good job for the front here. They do protect it really well and they spray all this back portion because the front, as you can say, you know, or see, excuse me, it stays clear, you know, and clean and whatnot. They still got paint on it and they actually do paint it. They've, you know, put some protection on it. So that's why it looks good. So that area, that rocker cap, etc. I'm gonna go ahead and accentuate it all the way up and get all that sealed up. <clears throat> all right, so sorry I'm out of breath, I'm really tired. So step two now is to get all the masking done. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Generally, you want to actually tape off everything that you do not want any kind of adhesion to, any kind of bed liner. Now I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna get behind all of this and I'm gonna scuff all that up so that's all done. This has just been roughly you know, grinded down and scuffed up. Now I can go in there by hand and start scuffing all of the areas that you basically can't get your tool to. So with that said, that's gonna be uh, one of the next steps. But before we can do that, 
I want to do some seam sealing. So I'm going to go through and because I have removed majority of all of the old seam sealers so that I could get the corrosion behind the OEM seam sealer. Oh yeah, there's always corrosion behind it. So I removed that, got that all out. So now it's time to put in brand new seam sealer now and then we can bedline all of these wheel wells. So it's not a hard process. It's actually pretty easy. Um, we're basically just going to apply the seam sealer on with a single action caulk gun. It's pretty simple. Uh, white seam sealer is what we're using only for the sheer fact that I have an abundance of it. Normally or typically I would use the gray seam sealer, but in this instance, it's just the wheel well. So it really doesn't matter. You know, um, I will tell you that if you are going to see a prevalent amount of the seam sealer that you should value shade it to the paint that you're using. Uh, typically if you're going to paint a darker color, you want a darker seam sealer. It's going to make it lighter where that white seam sealer is versus if you have gray seam sealer. I do have gray, um, but I kind of hoard it and use it in the engine bays and, you know, et cetera, and places like that where you typically would see it a lot more versus I'm literally going to spray a bunch of bed liner over it and you're never going to see this seam sealer. I just want it to typically do its job and seal the edge so that no moisture comes in from the backside of the pinch welds or the backside of a seam, etc. That's why you have corrosion issues. So if typically if you paint something or seal coat it and whatnot, if you didn't do the backside, what is that? It's like having a completely open. So it's like putting on a shirt. Actually, you know, perfect example, hospital gowns. They give you something that puts it on, but then when you put, you know, look behind there, your ass is hanging out. The same thing is with the car. You literally, you're getting cold and drafty back there. Well, that's where all the moisture is coming from the backside. If you don't seal that up from the backside of the panel, perfect example is these fenders. You know, that's the reason why I've gone over and beyond to seam seal the edges, go over and beyond to actually prep it properly so that the bed liner will adhere. Um, again, the reason why I use bed liner guys is because it is so resilient. It is extremely, what's the word? It's tough. It's just tough. Honestly, you gotta think about a bed of a truck, all right? You spray it all in there, and then over the course of 10, 20 years, and you throw tools and, and logs and rocks and lumber and, and whatever the hell in their engines, whatever, and it beats it up, and that bed still looks really good, right? Well, imagine an area that doesn't take any abuse, that's covered in the same product. How long is it gonna last now, right? So that's why I use it. And it's, it's, it's really good for locking out a lot of moisture. So that's the main reason why I use spray on bed liner, but without talking your head off too much, I'm going to go ahead and get into the seam sealing portion. You basically just apply it on, use your finger, smooth it across, make it look pretty because you're just going to coat it with bed liner. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, I got everything done. All of the edges are all seam sealed inside and out. Everything looks really good. Now it's actually ready to be coated with bed liner, just like the other side. The other side's already done as well. So, yeah. Now it's time to actually kick it into gear and get everything all bagged and covered, etc. Because when you're applying Raptor bed liner, or any bed liner, spray on bed liner, I should say, because you know, there are roll on and brush on. In this case, I use Raptor spray on bed liner. So it's very messy. And because it uses a high volume or a high PSI to actually throw it through the gun, it goes everywhere. Um, there can be splatter and uh, overspray is um, kind of not even the best way to explain what this stuff is. I mean, I'm, I'm talking like dots of this stuff is going to go every freaking where if you don't have stuff bagged and when I mean bagged, I mean covered with plastic or a sheet or blanket or whatever you got available, a tarp, you know, etc. So get some plastic over it. Do what you gotta do, you know, throw car parts on it. Just as long as it's covered and you don't care about them, make sure everything ideally is covered for the sheer fact that this stuff is literally going to stick to everything and it is a pain in the butt to clean up, especially when it's wet. So yeah, um, right now, the ideal time right now is to actually take my time and go around and just start taping everything. Um, I'm pretty much going to throw this back into another time lapse again because it is uh, a, a good majority of time is going to be spent on this especially a lot of the taping portions. But again, guys, I will go around everything and I'll show you everything that was done, how I did it and why I did it, you know, explain it, etc. So we've got the first step done. All the grinding has been done. Step two, all the paper and taping and whatnot. That's basically what's going to go down right now. And then once um, we've got it all bagged and ready to go, it's all taped off. We can basically jump into step three, which is the final step. Now, it's been days to get to this point. Um, it may seem like it's only a day process, but it takes a long time to do a big job like this, especially going out of my way to really look and uh, find all of the problematic you know, portions of the car. So that's really what I did was I, I really tried finding a lot of areas that were probably going to have an issue or already were having an issue and they were addressed. So that's why I went over and beyond with the rear wheel wells. A lot of the places that weren't even generally seam sealed from the OEM factory and whatnot, I, I, I typically just said fuck it and just did all of the seams, all of the welds. Everywhere there is an adjacent panel, it got seam sealed. So that when I do coat all of this, I know that it is all going to be completely sealed perfectly, you know, especially from all of the moisture and stuff coming in from the backside, because we all know how it works with, um, getting in and out of your car with wet boots, wet shoes and whatnot. You know, you track it in, well, it doesn't exactly escape very well, you know, so Subarus have a, a big issue with evaporating moisture. So that's what you want to make sure, make sure everything's locked in. So you don't have any problematic issues with rust coming back. So that's what I'm going to do now. We're going to step a uh, 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 uh. That was a big stumble. I'm going to set up a big, a <laughs> big, still stumbling. I'm going to set up a time lapse. I'm tired. Long day already, but time lapse. We'll set this up, get you guys a good view of what's going on. You get to see me run around like a chicken with my head cut off. And yeah. All right, Bill, come on. Work on some Subarus. Let's go.
All right, so you can see that I basically just back taped all of the edges. Literally just put the sticky side pointing in, taped it to all the edges. It kind of gives it kind of like a dam and a wall that runs around. That way I can just come in, spray and whatnot inside here. And don't have to worry about it going on the other side of this panel here. So with that said, what I'm trying to do is because it is taped in this in this fashion, I'm going to take some plastic and we'll lay some plastic right over it. I'll trim it all around and then it'll stick to the sticky side. And then essentially I could just take that plastic and fold it underneath and it'll all still be stuck to the edges. That's basically how this is done. Okay. Well, there's a lot of taping to be done. So I think it's going to be one of those things where instead of doing a time lapse, I think I just want to go kind of like this. Yeah, I like doing that a lot easier, man. That, that you imagine if I could just do that every single time, just lift my hand up, cover the, and just bring down, and all the work is done. <sighs> Gotta love editing. All right, so everything is all bagged up, as you can see. Everything is plastic on the backside, and then taped and sealed up around all of the edges. So when I say bagged and tagged, this is basically bagged and tagged and ready to go. All of the outside portion will not be coated. You want to make sure, again, like I said earlier, all the edges are completely taped off. Anywhere that you do not want bed liner, this stuff is nasty. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to jump into the rest of the taping of this car. And again, I think we're going to go ahead with a little bit more of uh, some YouTube editing. And there we go. Wow. I really wish that this actually worked like this. So did a bunch of work and... Everything is bagged up. Everything is all taped up and ready to go. As you can see, it is completely sealed and completely covered. That way I know that anything that I don't want to be bed linered won't be. So I'm going to have to put some plastic down on top of this blanket. That is my welding blanket. Obviously, I do not want that to be covered in bed liner as well as everything else around me because this stuff is nasty. So that's all done as well as this side. So I am actually like legit ready to go. So it's another day. Um, actually had uh, a family emergency. So I had to run up to the Adirondacks and whatnot, but now I'm back. So I can actually finish up this upload. This upload would have already been up on my channel last week, but I had to leave, you know, so it is what it is family first so that's what i'm gonna do right now um i'm gonna put some more plastic down and then i gotta run around the whole shop and then just cover everything and then yeah it's gonna take some time but other than that it needs to be done because i don't want any bed liner on anything else and now it's all done so everything has been covered that needs to be covered etc all the way around and i am ready to go so basically we don't have to worry about any overspray at all floors are wet wet dust can't fly so we are ready to go so now it's time to start mixing up some raptor bed liner and get this all ready to go if you guys are not familiar with raptor this is the u-paul gun U-Paul, as in the company that makes this product, U-P-O-L. And I'm going to go ahead and put this together. I think, nope, this is the tip. This is what you spray out of. Oh, well, screw that in a minute. And then this goes in here. That's your long sleeve. This is actually what goes in and does the suction fed from the bottle. So we're going to go ahead and I'll just quickly show you how to mix this up. It's relatively easy comes in bottles just like this. It's great is because you can actually not have to mix up an entire gallon. You can just mix up a small little bottle and small portion and just do small jobs if you so choose. So what's great about that is you just add the correct amount of hardener to the bottle, put the cap back on, shake it up. It tells you exactly how to do it right on the back. Easy peasy. And then you literally take the lid back off after it's shaken for the correct amount, put your gun 
on top of the actual bottle itself, threads right on, and then you just hook it up to your air compressor and you are spraying bed liner. All right, so this is basically it. I do have a water separator that I have screwed onto the end of my regulator. Highly recommend that. You just screw it right to the top of the Raptor. I am in a paint suit, so I don't have to worry about any kind of overspray getting on me. And I have taped up the hose. I will show you how I've done that because that will save you a ton of time from cleanup or just having to throw the hose away in general. So tape all the way down. I probably do tape down probably about four feet or so so that I don't have to worry about any bed liner getting on my hands and being sticky because if you touch this plastic, it's just gonna rip it off and separate the plastic and you're just gonna be cussing. So once you get four feet down taped and then you can do the rest all in plastic, that can drag on the floor, no problem. But other than that, I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and set this camera up. We'll do a nice little time lapse of spraying the bed liner and hopefully you guys enjoy what you see. Let's get it. guys what do you think got it all untaped the best thing to do is about 45 minutes about an hour into the actual application and get it sprayed you are going to want to untape this do not let it completely set up and harden for the sheer fact that it's going to be extremely hard to get all of your masking tape and all of the masking paper completely off. Not just that, you're not going to have a nice clean edge as well. You might even have to cut it away with a razor blade and that's just going to suck. So in all reality, get yourself some gloves and just take your time unmasking everything as best as possible. I did leave a few things like the bag and whatnot, but that's something that I could easily untape and unmask. But everything turned out amazing. You know, it's a, it's a really good job. I'm really happy with it. So, overall, everything looks really good. I'm really happy with it. 
Super nice, right? Nice, nice lines. And then I can go through here and I can actually just start painting right up to that bed liner. And actually the bed liner, if I wanted to, is paintable as well, but it's good. It's the way it is. So other than that, I'm really happy with this. This is basically a really nice, spectacular job. So I'm gonna go ahead and let all this stuff cure right up. And tomorrow is another day. So tomorrow, I'll come in here and just do all the rest of the actual unmasking, like the, you know, the actual bags and whatnot. And I can actually start putting the bags back into the car, start putting this a little bit back together so that I can actually finish the body work and get this thing in paint. So what do you guys think? This is the perfect way to be able to rust proof your Subaru. Pretty nice, right? I mean, that, that right there is just, wow. I mean, this is something that I wish that the factory would have done from a standpoint you know like they, they just made this their thing but in all reality it's expensive so the process it takes a long time and to teach a robot to do all this is just going to be like yeah that's not going to happen so with that said guys i hope you enjoyed i hope you got to understand all of the steps and the processes sorry it was a long video but it definitely was needed so that you can explain or so i can explain and you can understand the actual process and do it yourself so with that said, I'm Bill Schneider. This is Rumble Garage. I work on only cars with the stars, Subaru only. Have a good day.